Number 36. What fraction of ice is submerged when it floats in fresh water? Given the density of the fresh water is zero, at zero degrees Celsius is very close to 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. All right. So um, the final equation for this problem is actually very simple, but the idea behind it is a little tricky. So let's teach you the concept and then you should be able to apply this a lot better than me just giving you the formula at the end. Um, so what we have here is we have ice floating in water. It told us that. And we know that from everyday, you know, experiences. Now there's going to be a certain portion of this ice, right? If I were to think about the water line here, continuing on, continuing on out, there's a certain fraction of this ice that is submerged. I mean, according to my picture, it looks like a majority of it, right? 80%, 90%, 70%, whatever it is. We don't know, but it might be somewhere around that figure. Now the question is, how do we find this out? How do we find our fraction submerge and it's floating and all this stuff? Well, we have to go back and think about the main principle. Just like every problem, we have to take a step back. And what's the main physics concept behind this problem? What's driving the problem? Well, the main concept here is Archimedes' principle. All right? Archimedes' principle basically states this, that the weight of a fluid, the weight of a fluid displaced will equal the weight of the object placed in that fluid. All right, that's the whole idea. This, this, this is it. This is it. The weight of the fluid displaced is equal to the weight of the object that's placed in the fluid. Okay, not the not the portion of the object that's submerged, but the entire weight of the object. All right. Why does that make sense? Well, think about it, guys. This thing is floating, right? If this ice cube is floating meaning it's experiencing no accelerations in any direction, you know that whatever force vector is pointing down on this thing has to equal whatever force vector is pointing up on this thing, right? It's easy to see what the downward force vector is. That's the weight of the ice. It's not clear to see what's the upward force vector, right? And the upward force vector is the weight of the water. You might say, well, what? How does that even make any sense? Well, think about it this way. The cup was originally at this particular height, right? Right about here. Then all of a sudden, the level rose, okay, to be now at this particular height. So there was a change in height between these two scenarios where there's no ice cube and now there's an ice cube. So essentially, this amount of, or this volume, right, of water was displaced. Now this volume of water experienced an upward force, right? There had to have been an upward force pointing up on this to push the water up. Well, the upward force that the water experiences is equal to the downward force that the, uh, that the ice is pushing down on the water, right? Newton's third law, right? The equal but opposite stuff. So in other words, another way to reframe the problem is that whatever, whatever weight of water that was displaced here is actually pushing down and back on up on the ice from the bottom. Okay? And you might if you if you think about, you know, if you ever you know went to the ocean, played in a pool, whatever the case is, right and you're pushing down on let's say a, a, a you know, um, a beach ball or something in the water, right? It feels like you're pushing against or something's pushing against you. Right? As you push the balloon down or the beach ball down, there feels like there's an upward force against you. What is that upward force? Well, that's the weight of the water that you were trying to displace with the ball. All right. Now, hopefully that should make a little sense. Okay. Let's clean the picture up. So we have this whole idea. We understand this whole dynamic now. All right. Well, I don't know if you do. I'm just assuming. But let, let, let's assume it makes sense. So now what I can do is start expanding on uh, these uh, on this relationship. Right, Like most physics problems, we start with a beautiful, simple relationship, and then we build into all types of complexity and craziness, right? And then all of a sudden, from all the craziness, we start simplifying stuff, and we get down to a nice, simple equation, right? So we start simple, get complex, end simple, kind of like life. Anyway, that's enough for the life lessons today. Let's expand now on the weight of the uh, fluid displaced. So why don't we take a look at the right-hand side here? Now we have to start thinking about some formulas that we can uh, plug in, all right? What I'm going to do, though, first is actually let me expand on the weight one more uh, in one more step. Now, we can use a bunch of different we, we can do a bunch of different techniques in order to solve this. OK, I'm going to do one extra step here. I think it'll make it a little easier. So why don't we do this? 
let's expand on the weights. Now we know weight is simply mg, right? So let's say that the, the weight of the fluid displaced should equal then the mass of the water multiplied by gravity, and then taking the weight of the object, that should be, in this case, it's the ice, right? This would be the mass of the ice multiplied by gravity. Now, in terms of this, I'm gonna be even a little more specific. This says the mass of the water. I'm gonna say the mass of the water displaced, okay? Now, what's very simple here is that we see the gravities cancel, right? So we're left with now this simple, simple equation. So we got the mass times the weight of water displaced, excuse me, the mass of the water displaced, I don't even know what I just said, is equal to the mass of the ice. Okay, now we have to start, remember, they're asking us what fraction of ice is submerged and all this stuff, so we gotta start thinking about, well, I'm definitely talking about height somehow. So actually, how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to go to this formula first. I'm gonna solve this formula for the mass, and that should be pretty easy, just cross multiply, right? Mass should be equal to the density multiplied by the volume. So what I'm gonna do now is take this and basically substitute it on in for each of my masses, okay? So substituting it on in for the mass of the water uh, displaced, we would have the density of the water, this is fresh water, multiplied by the volume of the water displaced. And that should then equal the density of the ice multiplied by the volume of the ice. Not the volume of the ice submerged, but the whole volume. Remember, it's the whole weight of this ice cube that is uh, producing the downward force, okay? All right, so hopefully we're good here. Now, let's expand on now what do we mean by the volumes, okay, of the water displaced. And this is where the picture will come in handy. So let's take a look at the picture, guys, all right? Let's first start detailing, uh, it doesn't matter which one, but let, let's first start detailing the volume of water that was displaced. So you might look at it and say, well, the volume of water displaced is gonna be, I see that this is a change in height here, right? Here's H, and then I realize that, you know, uh, to find the height here, I gotta think about, well, what's the shape of this container? And oh my goodness, it's not a perfect cylinder, and now how do I, don't know the formula for that? All right, don't worry about it. That's not how we're gonna do it. There's another way to look at it, okay? That whatever volume of water was displaced here, right, I can draw this line, continue this line on out. So this is the total amount of water that was displaced, is equal to, right, the volume of the object that was submerged. Right, the volume, the total volume of the submerged portion of the object. Not the total volume of the object, but the total amount of volume that, uh, of the object that was submerged. So in other words, I realize that if I were to highlight this, I'll draw a little line over across like this, and then what I'll do is highlight this particular section. Okay, this is the volume of water that was displaced right in this region, okay? So that should hopefully make sense. Now, I can represent this volume because I it's a cube. I'm assuming it's a cube. If it's a, if it's a sphere, whatever, it doesn't matter. The, the, the math will work out just the same. It's just easier to conceptualize if it's a cube. So now what I realize is I can represent the height of this uh, portion I just highlighted, right, by saying here's the height. So let's call that H. Actually, you know what, let me choose blue because I think it's gonna be a little confusing. Just give me one second. All right, so here's the height, right? This is the height of the water, the, the height of the volume of water that's displaced because it's equal to the, again, the volume of the object, the, the volume of the submerged portion of the object. And then I could take it and multiply it by here's the length, right? And then we could call that the width. So we'll call this L and W, all right? So now let's go back to our formula and let's plug in now. So the density of the water, that hasn't changed, is uh, now multiplied by the volume of the water that's displaced. So it's this blue H times this blue L times this blue W, right? So let's just throw that on in now. Let me just grab a different color. So it's the height multiplied by the uh, length multiplied by the width, okay? And now let's take a look at the uh, volume now of the ice cube itself. So let's go back to red. So now that's the total volume of this thing, okay? What I'm trying to do is expand on the volume of the ice. So it's the total volume. How do you find the total volume? Well, it's the total dimension now. The height of the ice cube goes on up to here now, right? It goes on up to the top. 
So I can now extend this line on down if I wanted, right? And you can see that there's a little portion sticking up. This will represent the height, okay? This will represent the length. Oh, look, it's the same L, right? And this will represent the width. Oh, look, it's the same width, right? The only difference here between the two colors is gonna be the blue height and this red height, okay? So let's plug everything on in though, all right? Let's be consistent. So here, this is going to equal now the density of the ice, and then I expand it on the volume of the ice. Let's put that in red. It's the height of the cube multiplied by the length of the cube multiplied by the width. And as we said, the length and the widths are both the same. So these just cancel, okay? And now here we're starting to get down to simplicity, okay? So here we now have the, so in terms of simplifying this, we now have the uh, density of the water times, I wish I chose a different color instead of keep switching, times the, uh, times the blue height, all right, will equal then, hold on one second, will equal the density of the ice multiplied by now the red height, okay, which is, I'm just gonna sub use some subscripts here so we can get rid of the colors, okay? So here the height, this will be the height of the water displaced, okay? And then this will be the height of the ice cube overall. Now, if you have to answer the question, what fraction of the ice is submerged? We're basically relating these two heights together as a proportion, right? If you look at the picture, what ratio, the blue height over the red height, or the red height over the blue height, would represent the fraction of the ice submerged. It sounds to me like it would be the blue height divided by the red height, correct? If you notice, this is less than this, and therefore we should get a fraction, right? And according to my picture, it looks like it's gonna be somewhere around 80, 90%, something like that, right? So, and my picture's a little bit to scale on this problem. So, just to make it a little easier. Now, okay, so now that that's the case, so the blue height divided by the red height is going to be our answer. So basically what I need to do now is take this equation down here, manipulate it so that now I just do algebra, take the blue height and divide it by the red height. So we're going to have, and, and this time I'm going to just use black, okay? So it's going to be the height of the water displaced, and I'm going to divide out from the right-hand side the height of the ice. And that will then equal, I'm going to move this term, right, the density of the water on over to the right. Okay, I'm doing just the math all at once here. I'm just doing cross multiplication, that's it. I'm just bringing this on across to the bottom over to the left, and then I'm bringing this on across to the bottom on over to the right, that's all, okay? So this is equal to the density of the ice over the density of the water. And here it is, I mean here, voila, this is it. This is the, sim this is the simplistic equation. So now all I gotta do is plug it in, right? So the height of the water displaced is equal to the, excuse me, divided by the height of the uh, ice cube is gonna be equal to here's the fraction, right? This is what's going to, this is how you're gonna find it. It's simply a ratio of the densities. I mean, it's so simple, right, at the end. So the density of ice, you have to either know this or look it up. It's gonna be 0 0.9, I think it's 1 7. Uh, kilogram per cubic meter. Just double check me on that. I'm just trying to go from memory. Um, so that's good. And then uh, divided by now the density of the water. And I guess we we are to assume that the density of this fresh water, the water inside of this, I, the the water inside of this cup here is very close to zero degrees Celsius. Uh, so that is over 1,000. And actually, hold on. I already realized I would have made a mistake. So I, I gave you the density of. Um, ice in grams per cubic centimeter, but we need it in the same units here, kilogram per cubic meter. So it's just going to be multiplying that answer I just had by 1000. So it's 917, all right, uh, kilogram per cubic meter, and then divided by now 1000 kilogram per cubic meter for the water. All right, and now all we have to do is just find the fraction. All we gotta do is just do the division, all right? So this should be simple. I'm going to write the final answer. So the height of the water displaced divided by the height of the ice, which is equal to the fraction. We can now say this is equal to the fraction submerged will equal now uh, 917 divided by 1,000, which is equal to 0.917. So there's the fraction. 
in terms of a percent, right, it'd be about 91.7% would be submerged. And there you go, all right? Long-winded discussion on this. However, um, I want to take the time to develop the idea, right? I want to I want to teach you how to fish, not just, not just give you some fish here, all right? So guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it very much. We really do appreciate your viewership. You are helping us grow, and we couldn't do this without you. Um, so thank you. Thank you very much. And if you can subscribe, that'd be great. If you can hit the like button too. Awesome. If you can tell your friends even better. All right. We appreciate it very much. You guys have a great day. Take care.